All right. Oh, that's a nice one. Come here. Hey, guys. See why I left that tree? <laughs> I told you I was going to leave that tree because they seemed like there was just six or eight small ones there. I didn't even see. I seen a couple fish here, but I didn't realize how big they were. But they look, come here. All right, stop, stop, stop. You hate, don't you hate that every time you touch them? Stop it. Good gosh. Every time I touched him, guys, he flopped. I couldn't get a hold of his mouth. I couldn't get a hold of him sideways. And I was afraid just to let him flop around on my line because I don't have a four-pound test. All right, guys. He nailed it. There's that new Tweety Bird. That's a nice fish, guys. Look look at the color in him, how yellow he is. He's been in deep water. My guess is he just came out of deep water. All right. All right, guys. Got a new color in the Tweety Bird I'm playing with. I'm going to share it with you right now. New color in the Tweety Bird. Now, I made this bait color in uh, the Tweety Bird and the Itsy Bit and the TNT Worm. It's a nice fish, guys. He's probably 10 inches. Okay. I made two different colors. I made, well, I made the same color, but one thing I did do different on one of them is, let me sit down here and I'll show you. All right, that's the Tweety Bird. This one is blue and silver flake. This one, I know it looks darker, but the only thing I did was add black and bigger blue flakes. See the gray big blue flake in it? We'll fish with it later. Guys, found another one. Wow. You gotta love when the water cools off, guys. They get, they get feisty. Look at my rod bending. That's light action rod. And that's why I'm using a light action rod, right? I said this before, guys, no, no hard feelings. I know a lot of y'all guys, vertical jig, and that's fine. I've done some of it, and I do that a lot of times, too, if I get on brush pile. Because you can't vertical jig. <laughs> you can't vertical jig where I'm at right now. But that's why I like fishing this way. Some of the people have asked me about dock fishing. I love dock fishing. A lot of people hate it because it's hard. That's a nice fish. On that Tweety Bird, it's hard. I mean, <laughs> guys, I'll, I'll spit, me, just put him back when I tell you. That's a nice fish guy. He's 12 inch fish. 11, 11 three quarter probably. I got to throw back here. Go under that part that holds the boat up. About three to four feet where they're at. Yeah. So do I get there every cast? No. I'm getting there about once out of three casts. I'm putting it where I need to put it. When I put it where I need to put it, I'm getting bit. Every time I put it in the right place, I've gotten bit. Okay. Let's fish with that. <laughs> that's what happens when you have bass baits and stuff but I need to take that off I ain't through it forever that scrounger head that's fall fishing here guys put a scrounger head on if you're a bass fisherman on Lake Gaston any lake put a scrounger head on put a fluke on it right now our water has some color to it now that's why I made this color up too we've had all this rain from Ida then we had this other pieces of this other hair can't come through it poured down last night guys poured down so we've had a couple days of rain this week off and on. That's why the water temperature's coming on down. All right. So I thought, the other day I thought, I didn't even make another color. I need another stained water color. Now this color's not real dark, but it's going to be a good light stain color. For y'all guys that are fishing mud, you need to use solid black. <laughs> I know I'm laughing at myself, but black or solid blue, dark blue. Uh, a short probably pretty good, but I mean, I got I got uh, flamingo and I got that orange. But you, you know, we get mud water. They'll tell you blue shows up the best, blue and black. All right, let's see if we can see if we can see the fish move when the bait gets back there. I watched the see the see the fish moving right there. They see my bait. That's how I know I got it back or close to them. All right, one of them's coming out of there. You see him coming. All right, guys, I had my camera on and I cut it off. I didn't know my camera was on or something. I don't know what happened. Anyway, I do that a lot. I leave my camera on, think it's off, vice versa. Especially when I'm running two cameras. I cut one off, don't cut the other one off. And... All 
All right. Oh boy, that fell out of his mouth once I touched it. All right, guys, that's a nice fish too. They're getting nicer. I told y'all I'll start catching some nicer fish once this water start cooling. Quit catching all those babies. I was catching seven to nine inches. Now I'm catching nine to 12 inches. Those bigger fish are coming back in. And, and you know, I tell you, I have people ask me questions about crappy fishing. I'm learning all the time too, guys. If somebody acts like they know it all about crappy fishing, uh, so I know some of y'all guys fish a lot and you're a lot older than me. You have fished a lot more than I have. Yeah, you know, I don't fish for a couple days a week. All right, so most of the time, if I get three days in a week and a couple evenings, that's about it. But I learn every time I go, I feel like I learn. But something I've noticed with LiveScope, I say this all the time, LiveScope has taught me so much. Uh, and here's what I've learned from LiveScope. Crappy spend more time out of open water than we realize they do. I've been at boat docks fishing like this and see a school come in and go under the dock. I'm like, so where they been? They've been out here in open water chasing crap or chasing shad. I've seen them chasing shad. I've put it in my videos. I edit the video. I don't know if I made it live yet or not. The other day where some shad came by and the crappie rolled up and started chasing them. I said, well, I, <laughs> I reckon I've done that school because until they come back and they came back, I waited about 15 minutes. They came back and I caught a few of them. But when you go to a dock and ain't none there, you go like, well, these crappy moved. Yeah, they have moved, or they're out here chasing shad. If they're hungry, they're not gonna sit there and say, well, guys, I reckon we're gonna starve to death sitting at this dock. No shad are coming by and there's no minnows here. They're gonna go looking for something to eat, right? Guy, okay, so they just school up, chase open water a lot, and they spend, I think the bigger crappy, let's say 12 to 16 inches. Some of them spend a lot of time in open water and they don't come back to these docks and hold up that often. They'll hold up out here in 20 foot on a stump. I got a video coming up. Y'all might see it for this one where I'm just fishing stumps. Okay? And that's what I'm going to do tomorrow again. Tomorrow, I'm going to fish stumps. All right, maybe this one's a crappy. The last one was a bass. <laughs> I told the so I said, man, it's a bass fisherman. And I told him, I said, I'll probably catch as many bass as you caught. I think he said he's caught a couple of that. So I've caught two or three bass <laughs> they ain't monsters uh, or big you know big i do catch them up to 15 inches and i've caught them bigger but most time they're eight to 12 inches on crappy baits he's about an eight and a half to a nine and a quarter all right guys it's still on the tweety bird I catch a couple more on it uh, i'm kicking around different docks what i'm doing uh last dock i went to i didn't catch last two docks i didn't catch anything there were a few there, but they wouldn't, that, I ain't sure they was very big. Sometimes too, it's hard to tell crappy from uh, some perch. Don't think they were some perch. I think they were small crappy. But anyway, they followed me a little bit and the jig looked like it was big as they was, so I went on. Here I are. There ain't but a few right here either. Well, guys, I found another one. Don't know how, but I did. I'm on the corner of this dock, it seems like. Now I came here last Saturday, guys, and there was no crappy here. Uh, that's what I'm telling y'all about crappy moving. Today they're here. Two docks I went to, I saw a dock way down there I went to. He's about nine and three quarter. Maybe nine and, uh, he could be nine and 13 sixteenths or something like that, guys, but we don't need to be precise, right? Let's give y'all a guess. Um, I'm going to back up here. Little minnows floating on the water there. Something up through a Probably a bass I caught through up. I'll show y'all right here. See, they're right there on the corner, and there's something way back in there. The other spot's way back here, but this look, now some of that's brush now, guys. That's not all crappy. The crappy are up on top. Like, see that eight up, eight up on top? They're right here. All right, guys. I'm back up in there. They're, they're right there. Now, guys, I don't make it. I don't get it underneath there every time. Sometimes it doesn't happen. Sometimes I don't get it where I need it. All right. Now I'm watching the school. I seen a couple move there. They gonna catch on to me here in a minute. Two or three slid out. That's a good chance I'm not gonna catch one that time. They went back. I don't want them really to fall them. I'd rather rather for one in the school just to grab it right there. All right. Okay. 
But if you can get it back underneath of them, now this dock doesn't have braces on it. The dock I left down there has braces on it. And I lost, well, I lost one bait there. One jig head and a bait, but there you go. That's part of that's part of uh, crappy fishing, guys. You're gonna lose baits and you jigs. And around these docks, around these docks, you're gonna lose stuff, okay? Just part of it. Like I said, I've been using the guys jigs that send me on these small baits. I hate losing them. I've been I've been keeping I call a junkie jig and I got guys the video. I'm <laughs> I'm gonna load it to YouTube today. Probably y'all gonna see it Monday. This is Saturday. This toilet bait. He's a baby. He's probably seven and a half. That's the size. Of, look, I done tore this one too. See, I tore the bait. The fish didn't tear. I tore it with those pliers. School of shad coming in there. Let's see what happens. Oh, they seen them. They took off the other way, didn't they? All right, shad disappeared. Where'd they go? Uh, Shad took off a different, they seen those fish, they took off a different direction, didn't they? Right, guys, I moved to another dock just to see if I get the Tweety Bird to work out somewhere else different. And it's color, this color's working. And that's a good way I test the color, guys. I'm taking y'all with me. This is the, I started, for, I started Friday with this color and uh, it rained on me. I caught some on it. And we moved into it Saturday here with it. I started over this morning. That's a nice fish too, guys. So I took y'all with me with this color. Trying it out. Have no name for it yet. Uh, but I, I like it. Like I say, it's plum with blue and silver in it. And uh, I don't know. Plum crazy? <laughs> plum blue? Uh, I, I run them across my wife sometimes. She has good ideas. Azure was her idea. Uh, and we got talking about OJ and different oranges. And I said, we saw me calling it something. I said, well, it's orange. Just call it OJ, orange juice. So I try to keep the name short, but something a little catchy. That way you can remember it too, right? Somebody says, what color are you using? Oh, I messed him. You said, I'm using OJ. You know, you remember it. Wipe out. You remember that, don't you? I messed one back there, guys. I'll show you where they're at. They're way back there. All right? 35 feet. In front of the dock here is uh, 18 feet. That's where they're at. So I've got to skip it 14, 15 feet before they'll hit it. So I put some way on back, and I have fished here before, guys. Last time last time I was here, the owner was here. <laughs> he come down and said, there was another guy here yesterday. I said, did you run him off? He said, well, no. He said, I didn't run him off. He said, people are welcome to fish here. I, <laughs> I said, I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I, did you run him off because he's catching my fish? He said, no. He said, I don't care who fishes here. That's how most people are, guys. Every once in a while, you run into somebody that thinks they own everything. But uh, the law says you can fish docks, guys. Uh, actually, like I said, I said this earlier. The folks up might they that they might have paid for that dock, but they didn't they didn't they don't own the water, and uh, just be careful and don't hook the boats and don't hook their property. Like I said, if I if, sometimes I make a wild cast and go up on the dock, I go up and get it. Uh, I I have I work y'all know I work on boat houses and I paint a lot of boat houses. I got one more to paint yet. Actually, it's right up there. It's right up on the point. And uh, most people will tell you. Cause like I said, I know a lot of these lake people that work for them. If you hang up on that, on that furniture right there, or that lighter, they'd rather for you to go over and get the bait. Because if they go down there and accidentally reach down to move the lighter or, or the, bring a toddler down here and, and a young kid, he's right here playing, looking, and you got a hook on that chair over there or a crankbait hooked on the side of it. He goes, oh, look, a crankbait. And he grabs it. Don't know, he don't understand hooks yet. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying. They'd rather for you to go over and get the bait off the, off the chair if you get that wild, okay? Bam. There you go, guys. Another one. They're having a tournament today, guys. I talked to one of the guys in one of the boats. I said, y'all must be having a tournament. It's bass boats everywhere. He said, yeah, we're having a tournament. Bam. 
All right, guys, what do y'all think of this new color in the Tweety Bird? I caught some fish on it. Should I add it to the site? Do you like it? It's a, it's just plum, just some plum coloring, and it's got silver and blue flake in it, and a few purple. And I think next time I make a bass, I just made a few, I think I'll put more purple flake in it. Silver, blue, and purple. All right? Fish liked it. I had no trouble <clears throat> catching fish on it. But y'all tell me whether you like it or not. If you think it's something you would buy, I'm building the site. I'm adding baits to it all the time. I'm adding colors to it as we go along, okay? Uh, as I get time to make them. I got to make all these baits too, guys, and I'm still working, okay? Still working 40 hours a week and doing that in the evenings and then weekends and still making videos when I have time to fish. So, yeah, it's a lot to keep up with, but uh, <clears throat> if it's a color y'all think y'all going to buy, I'll put my time in it. All right, and if I make it the Tweety Bird, I'm going to make it also in the little bit. All right, <clears throat> I fished it in a little bit also, done real well in a little bit, no problem. So I'll probably make it in a little bit, Tweety Bird, uh, probably the Willow Tail. I'll see, I'll, I need to make it in three or four baits because it, it's, it's, it's worthwhile for me when I'm Mexico to shoot it, shoot it in different molds, instead of just shooting one mold. All right, y'all tell me what you think of it. Hey, Fishing Lake Country, my name is Dennis. We'll see you next time right here, guys. See you.